Hi there, it's Lerald, and today I'm going to talk about my UI and WoW and some of the decisions I've made with the add-ons I use and don't use. I'm going to do a kind of guided walkthrough of my UI and add-ons in a bit, but for the little intro here, I just wanted to put something visually interesting underneath it, so here's me killing a bunch of world quest mobs, I guess. I'm going to go over what I consider to be the core aspects of a good UI. I think the most important thing here, though, is a lesson I learned from one of my professors years ago, back when I was a student, and it is, if it works, you win. He was just talking about writing essays or whatever, but I think that's a good life lesson in general, and it definitely applies to playing video games, or non-video games, and putting together a UI. If your UI works for you, whatever it is, that's what matters. The purpose of your UI is to provide information about the game world to you in an easy to comprehend format. That's the most important thing, making it easy for you to process what's happening in the game. There's almost always something you could do to improve your UI, and it's good to be willing and able to make changes to it. This is especially true at the beginning of an expansion. Some add-ons may be discontinued or have bugs, so being able to move on from an add-on that isn't working is very important. So let's start with the default UI and talk about what aspects of it work well and what still needs improvement from Blizzard or through add-ons. I think Blizzard has done a really good job with updating the base UI with patch 10.0. I've used it for all of beta testing and for the last several weeks of farm raid and live, and it works pretty well. I really like how easy it is to share profiles with other players, how easy it is to swap profiles between characters, and just generally how easy it is to move things around in the base UI now. It all feels very modern. There are some areas where I have nitpicks, but that's pretty much all they are. They're mild annoyances, not game-breaking issues. One big criticism I have of the default UI, and I know I'm not alone in this, is that it doesn't allow you to have pixel-perfect numerical control over where you place your UI elements. Most add-ons do. If I use a unit frame add-on, I can set my target frame and player frame and whatever frames I want so that they have identical Y coordinates. 250 pixels from the bottom of the screen, for example. In the default UI, I can click and drag and say, yeah, it looks about the same. You can use add-ons in place of a lot of default UI components and you will have more control over how the game presents information. This comes at the expense of some more resource consumption on your PC, although how much more depends on the add-on. You will need to spend some time setting up add-ons, which again varies depending on the add-on, and how easily it transfers information and profiles to other characters. Some add-ons you may only need to set up once per account. Some add-ons you may need to set up once per character. One quick general tip for add-ons, especially for things like unit frames or action bars or nameplates or whatever that use profiles, is to set up a profile that you like. And if you intend for it to be the same setup that you use on every character, copy that setup over the default profile. This way, every character's default, when you first log on to it, will be that standard setup. And if you have to make a change on one character, it's present for all of your characters rather than being something that you change on one character, swap to the next and copy over, swap to the next and fix, and so on. Save yourself a lot of time down the line. All right, now let's talk about the elephant in the room, LVUI. LVUI is one of the most popular add-ons for WoW. It looks great, it reskins the entire default UI, adds functionality and control, and I still like the way it looks. But it has resource consumption problems for a lot of players, including myself. It can slow your FPS down considerably in raids. I was able to narrow this down primarily to the unit frames consuming too many resources, and I've been told that this has been fixed in the latest version, but I've been told that before a lot of times over the last decade plus that I used it. I always had inconsistent or at times just plain bad performance in raids when using LVUI compared to other UI setups. I guarantee people are going to show up, at least one person is going to show up in the comment section saying, I use LVUI and I have no issues. That's, that's great, dude. You can use it. Some players have no FPS issues at all when using it, and good for them. But many people do. 
I do, and my computer's pretty beefy. I usually play WoW or FIFA while I'm rendering out video. I record in raids without any issues, but using LVUI in raids is like an automatic minus 30 FPS, at least. So if you're using LVUI and having FPS issues, you should start by assuming that is your problem and try to replace it. Okay, I'm in game. Now let's uh, let's walk through my current UI, and I'm gonna have the beta open at the same time so I can tab back and forth to do a little side-by-side -side comparison here. Let's just start with the unit frames. I was very excited to use the default unit frames, and I think they work pretty well, but they have three minor issues that have led me to switch back to shadowed unit frames. Uh, first of all, the default unit frames, as you can see, dedicate a lot of space to stuff that isn't your health bar. There's artwork. <laughs> I mean, there's a screenshot of my character's face with his awesome glasses on. There's, you know, words, numbers, a uh, lot of space dedicated to the, like, resource bar. You know, there's just a ton of information here that isn't your health bar. And I found that having pretty much the entire frame be your health bar is just really helpful for knowing exactly how much health you have at any given moment. It's just a lot easier for me to read this big fat health bar than it is this little bitty one. I had a couple of close calls in the past few weeks in raid because I took a half a second longer to tell how much health I had left than I normally would have. I didn't die. It wasn't even like it was that big of a deal, but it was a little concerning. And really, I just don't need to see my character's portrait all the time. I kind of just want to see a great big fat health bar. Secondly, the way that the default UI displays your target of target is a little weird. Like this right here, shadowed unit frames. This is my target. Well, this is me. <laughs> this is my target. This is my target of target over here. But in the default UI, this is me. This is my target, and because my target is me, it won't show the target of target. If I trick some enemy into targeting me, there we go. You can see it's displaying down and to the right. Because of this, the unit frames take up substantially more vertical space than they do in add-on form. And once you factor in how the game displays buffs and debuffs on the default target frames, they were really just starting to clip into my weak auras. Like my weak auras uh, come all the way down here. And then once you have buffs and debuffs coming up, I found that I had to move all of my weak aura suites up by like 10 or 20 unit fray or 20 pixels. And that's just kind of annoying having to, you know, having to adjust everything because then now it starts to run into my field of vision uh, in combat. And that's just not great. And I kind of already mentioned the third issue a little bit, but it's the buffs and debuffs on your target. The default UI mostly does a good job with buffs and debuffs, but there are things I don't really ever need to see. Like, I don't need to see that my target is benefiting from the miss of Pandaria time walking rep buff. I don't really need to see the monk and demon hunter damage taken debuffs either. The default UI doesn't let you set up custom buff and debuff filters, and you can't control the size and location of buffs and debuffs either. Again, I think the default UI works very well for the majority of situations, but I just found myself wanting a little bit more control than it would let me have in this specific case. I've said in the past that the big problem I had with shadowed unit frames is that it didn't have a tool for exporting profiles to other players, but uh, that's actually not true. I just couldn't find it because it was weirdly placed in the UI. It's right here. It's under General, Layout Manager, Export, Import, and... Because of that, I have uh, I have exported this and put it in the paste bin, and it will be in the pinned comment if you want it. Now let's talk about action bars. Action bars are another part of the default UI that I think Blizzard did very well. I literally only have one complaint, and it is right here in the bottom right corner of the screen. This menu, for whatever reason, cannot be moved. You can't move it in edit mode. You can't move it with add-ons that allow you to move everything, like Blizz Move. This is immovable. Well, I realize it is a pretty minor nitpick, but I really like to have my details down in the bottom right corner. Like so. But I don't want it to just be overlapping that. So I could move the details up and all, but then that starts to run into more real estate being eaten up. 
and I would rather just use an add-on to move them up here and make them hide so that they only appear when I mouse over them. And uh, yeah, that's ultimately what I've gone with. I've gone back to Domino's. It has been updated for patch 10.0, and despite the add-ons developer initially saying that they weren't going to update it anymore, I guess they changed their mind because it's updated. It works totally fine. There's not really a lot else to say about it. Ultimately, action bars, you know, Domino's, Bartender, both of those action bar add-ons work fine. The default default bars work fine. It's really just this one little nitpick and not being able to, like, you know, hide this, this panel of whatever, this little, this little menu here. That's really all that it is. Unfortunately, Domino's doesn't have a good export feature, so I can't share the setup I have here, but it's pretty easy to get set up. You enter config mode by typing slash Domino's config, and then you just move your bars around. They snap into each other pretty, pretty easy, and you can affect their size, you know, the number of buttons on them. You are able to scale down to fewer than six buttons in a bar, which you're not able to do in the default UI. That was a small complaint that I had. And also in the default UI, you have to scale in increments of five, so you can scale to like 85%, but not 87. Not a huge issue, but again, just a little bit of extra power afforded to you by a UI add-on that you don't get out of the default UI. This is definitely the add-on that I feel the least passionate about. It's good, don't get me wrong. But I could go back to the default UI, uh, the default UI right now, no problem. I'm literally only using this so that I can put details down here instead of up, you know, 40 pixels. It's pretty minor. Weak Auras is a super powerful add-on, so much so that I am giving it like its own section. It's easily the most irreplaceable add-on in the entire video, and you can do incredibly powerful special stuff with it. I won't go into too much detail here. I will just pull up my Windwalker Weak Auras, which are still very much under construction, but they look something like this. I think most people like to set up Weak Aura Suites that look kind of like this, that are centered around the middle of the screen, that show off, you know, these are your major cooldowns, these are your sort of rotational skills, these are rotational buffs. That sort of thing. Uh, the cooldowns, buffs, and resources associated with a class are usually what I'm tracking with weak auras. That's the main thing. I will track tank debuffs. I usually try to do that up here, up on the upper left side. I can raid. Let's see if I can pull up a set of those. Here we go. Sanctum of Domination tank debuffs all along here. This is a dynamic group, so any debuffs that you have active would just spawn here, and then they would expand out of the right. You'll usually only have two to four of these auras at a time, so they would only come out to here at any given time during a fight. Weak Auras has excellent import and export functionality, like best of all add-ons in WoW, and I do have a link to my Wago page, so if you want to go there and grab any of my Weak Aura setups for the various tanks, knock yourself out. All right, now let's move on to nameplates. Using a nameplate add-on is kind of a necessity. Blizzard's default nameplates are pretty bad. They are probably the single worst aspect of the base UI in the post 10.0 revamp. I think you really have two choices here, threat plates or plater. This is one of the biggest questions I think a lot of players have when setting up a UI. It's probably the question I've been asked most in the last month in the channel. And I think it just boils down to how much time and effort you want to put into setting up. Do you use threat plates or do you use plater? Plater is a stronger add-on. It's a more popular add-on among higher end players because it has way more customizability. And I'm just going to open up the plater options menu here. Yeah, it's a bit overwhelming. I mean, good grief. That is a lot of settings just in the general tab. A lot of settings in the buff tab. <laughs> lot of color options, you know, and it's easy enough to just import somebody's profile and I will put my profile, uh, uh, my profile is actually on Wago because Wago does have support for plater profiles, so I'll put a link to that in the pinned comment, but it can be overwhelming to get started with plater. 
it is stronger. It has way more customizability. You can track more things. You can set up custom colors to indicate notable enemies. You can use glows to signal important dispels or interrupts. The downside is that when you compare it to threat plates, Plater consumes a little bit more CPU resources and it takes a lot more time to set up and get it looking nice. Now I will fly over here and just show some mobs with Plater up, just kind of kick some guys in the teeth just to show off how it looks while I'm fighting. I am playing Windwalker, but as you can see, debuffs are popping up over here, tracking cooldown on them. Health is green now that it's in the execute range, and you can see I have this little bar that indicates that a mob is below 15% health, so because I have improved touch of death talented, that would be available there. Got this little, it's my target indicator. Lots of little modules and things that are all, you know, pretty valuable. They indicate a lot of information just at a glance, which is nice. I'm going to roll out of combat and switch over to threat plates. All right, now I have threat plates active. And again, I'm just going to go hunt down a couple of mobs just to show off the difference in the way that it looks with the profiles that I, I have working. You can see the debuffs still showing up. Frankly, I think they look a little cleaner in the threat plates, but there's not quite as much data here. There's no bar indicating that a mob is getting close to the uh, improved touch of death range. There's a different target indicator, you know, it's technically still there, but there's not quite as much customizability. I have been using threat plates recently instead of plater in, I would say, the last month or so. And the main reason is pretty simple. I just wanted to see if it's a suitable replacement for plater. Uh, and, and I think it is. Threat plates is more of a lightweight add on, both in terms of CPU resource consumption and setup. And I think that's the bigger thing to consider here. You can't customize it as much, but the default setup is very good. I haven't really made much in the way of changes. I made a few just to make it look a little better and a little bit more like my plater setup, but I really didn't have to do much at all. I think it maybe took me like 10 or 15 minutes to get everything set up to the way that it is, which is quite a lot less than it took with plater. Like plater, threat plates has good import export profile uh, functionality. So I have a paste bin with my threat plates profile on it, which again is in the pinned comment, blah, blah, blah. I've said that a bunch already. <laughs> which one should you use? I think it's completely up to you. I, I like both of them quite a lot. They're both great. If you don't mind the extra time investment of learning a new add-on, or if exploring tons and tons of features and depth sounds like fun to you, then Plater's probably the right call. But just to pull up the Threat Plates uh, profile stuff by comparison, this is so much less involved than the like encyclopedia of options available to you in Plater. This is still a lot of things that you can mess around with, but most of this stuff I haven't touched and it's working very well. I think if you want something that you can just download and get rolling with straight away, Threat Plates is probably the better option. But again, both are pretty good. Taskbars are another area where I think Blizzard's default UI is seriously lacking, and for that I use Quartz cast bars. I'll just open up the options for that here and toggle bar lock. I pretty much just shove the player and target bars down here in the bottom right corner to the right of my unit frames. And then my focus, I put above my focus frame. There we go. That's about it. It's pretty uncomplicated. I, I have to say, these are great cast bars. They're pretty easy to set up. They're super customizable. They look great even just on a fresh install. And they have a lot of good little modules. But honestly, I don't play casters that often, so I really don't get that much use out of cast bars. I see them when I'm interrupting. That's usually about it. And again, this is a bit of an older add-on, so there's no profile export in this uh, add-on at all, but there's really not much to set up. You basically install them and drag them where you like them to be. And then you can turn stuff on and off if you'd like. You know, things like uh, uh, like watching a swing timer, that sort of thing. No, thank you. This isn't this isn't WoW classic. I don't think we need that. Now, let's talk about boss mods real quickly. For raids and dungeons, there are two main options. 
deadly boss mods or big wigs. You can use whichever you like. They're both very popular. I prefer big wigs because of big wigs voice, which is a plugin that lets you make a little Microsoft Mary type voice announce boss abilities. It's pretty easy to configure. You basically just toggle on voice for a given ability in the settings like type slash BW. Then you go to a raid boss. Let's go to Sire Denathrius in Castle Nathria. We'll come down to stage two because this is the uh, ability I wanted to emphasize here anyway. Crescendo. This is the ability that the ads in phase two of Sire Denathrius use. When they die after a couple of seconds, they uh, launch out a a bunch of little swirlies on the ground that'll knock you back and can knock you off the platform. Killed me a couple of times before I started using this. By turning on voice, after the ads die and they're about to send their little knockback thing out, the game will say, Crescendo! And then you know to move a few seconds later so that you don't get punted off the platform. This is also very helpful in Mythic Plus for dealing with casts from enemies that you aren't currently looking at, such as uh, heal casts in Mythic Plus or uh, invigorating fish sticks in Tassavesh. That's a really annoying one and, and definitely one that as soon as I hear the robot start to say invigorating fish stick, I'm immediately leg sweeping or doing anything I can to stun and cancel that cast. There are a lot of mechanics that can affect you that you're not going to be, you know, looking directly at and having that voice line call it out uh, can be huge in helping you react and prevent it from killing you or, you know, doing something bad. Good add on. Highly recommend it. I also use method raid tools in Aura. These are mostly just add-ons that I use to track buffs and raids like Aura is pretty much that it, it gives you a little battle res monitor up here which is really nice in mythic plus and in raid it also just gives you like consumable checks like when you do a ready check it'll just pop up some icons right here in the middle of the screen to let you know do you need food flask raid buff that sort of thing very basic and then method raid tools mostly does some similar things. It also does this timer that I really like this enormous, ridiculously oversized timer that I have above my uh, details window here. I just like having this. I made it this giant as like a joke at first, and then I found it actually was kind of useful to have just this enormous timer to see like, oh, yeah, I guess I've been in combat for like two minutes. 49 seconds or whatever, like knowing that people are about to have, you know, three minutes come back up, that sort of thing. It's actually kind of helpful, but I don't want to see it when I'm not in combat. So let's hide that again. Mythic Dungeon Tools is another add on. This is very useful for planning routes in Mythic Plus. You can look at mob health and damage values. You can scale the key level up, you know, to 35 or 10 or whatever. You can change affixes around and kind of see how much a mob's health will be at, at a given level, what their percentage is worth, and right click them and see what spells they have, although that doesn't seem to be working in this one. Let's go to a more recent set. Here we go. Tazvesh, Salia's Gambit. We can see this burly deckhand has Super Cezanne and Haymaker, and we can see, you know, what the base damage on that is. Yeah. So it's nice as a way to kind of study up and prepare for Mythic Plus dungeons, and it can be really useful for planning any higher level Mythic Plus dungeons. All right, now on to tooltips, and I don't use a tooltip add-on. I just use the default. I used to use TipTac. Some people use TinyTip, but they are both currently outdated. And the default, the default tooltip is okay. You know, it looks just looks fine. You can move it around with uh, with edit mode. HUD tooltip, there you go. Pretty straightforward. You can get more information out of add-ons, but most of that info is usually stuff like uh, other players' guild rank or what mount they're riding, and that's usually not very important. I want to quickly touch on damage meters. I prefer details. You can use any damage meter. They all work fine. I just like details the most. It has a lot of data. You can track resource generation, you know, like rage or energy or whatever. You can track buff and debuff up times. Obviously, you can track damage and healing meters and interrupts and death logs. All the important stuff that you would want to know on a moment to moment basis. It's a good add on. 
There are two things I want to mention here though. Damage meters can be one of the biggest things that slow your computer in raids. They're just a big resource hog. The best way to reduce their resource consumption is to reduce the rate at which the values update. To do that in details, you click this little cogwheel here, or options panel, they do the same thing, they open this, the options panel, and then you come over here to the update interval, which is on the main display page, it is right here in the general section, update interval. And that is what controls how quickly the, or frequently, the add-on syncs with and updates with all the other people who are using details, how quickly it collates all the data that's coming in. And the faster that this is set to update, the more resources it's gonna consume. So if you set it all the way down to real-time updating, it's gonna be chugging through resources. If you come all the way out here to the maximum of three every three seconds, it's gonna consume the minimal amount of resources. And most of the time, updating every three seconds is fine. It's not meaningfully different from updating, you know, 50 times as often. So I usually just leave it on three. Since I've been doing that, I have really never had any issues with details consuming too much resources or, you know, slowing down my FPS at all. So I just leave it on max and it's fine. The other thing I wanted to point out is the details action tracker, which again is in the options panel. And it is here under broadcaster tools all the way down here near the bottom broadcaster tools. And then it's the very first setting here, action tracker. You open options and you have two modes. You have this mode here, which gives you like, like a written list of all the spells that are cast. That looks bad. I like this one over here, the icons. And this is all it is. It's just a, like a visual indication of the spells that you've cast in the last, whatever, however many seconds, basically the last combat. You can control the amount of squares that it shows here. I'm having it run the entire width of my details frame. So at a size of 34 pixels, that's 11 squares. You know, you can kind of, you can unlock that window and move it around. Although I don't want to move it around right now, but you can. Uh, I'm just going to relock the frame. But you can control how big it is. Really, this serves almost uh, no purpose for me. It's probably the most useless thing on my UI. I've never once looked at it to see what I've cast recently. I just think it makes combat easier to follow for people who are watching along. And I think it looks cool. And that's ultimately why I chose to turn it on in the first place. And looking cool is very important. So I'm going to leave it on. <laughs> For an inventory mod, I really like Bagnon. It gives you that nice one bag look. It has some good plugins. It lets you track gold and items across your account really easily. It's a very popular add-on and it's well supported. Uh, like, you know, if I mouse over my gold, I can see all the gold on my other characters on the account. If I mouse over my potions, I can see which characters have potions which ones maybe need to be restocked, like my druid there. Uh, or maybe I can steal some of my druid's agility potions, send those over to the monk here. Um, yeah, you know, I don't have to go logging around all my different characters to find that stuff out. The only plug on uh, plug in that I'm using currently is Bagnon item info, and that is what is putting the numbers in the tooltips. It's just telling you the item level of the item that's in your bag. Uh, if you have BOEs, it'll say BOE. Yep, see here, BOE. It grays out the gray items. Very lightweight plug-in, but very useful. Great add-on. Good, good bag add-on. Now let's go over map add-ons. I think the default map and mini-map. That's not a map. Here we go. This is a map. The default map and the default mini-map are... Excellent. I think they've done a great job with them. I don't use any add-ons for either of them, but I do use a few add-ons for navigating the world. Handy Notes is great. It is a pretty simple add-on. It just adds indicators on the map for treasures, events, rares, and for ones that are a little more complicated, like this treasure right here, if you mouse over them, it'll give you instructions on how they work. You know, this deadly dapperling right here it's telling me it's not particularly complicated it's just a rare that you fly up to and sometimes it's up and sometimes it's not but it's telling me like i've killed it for adventure of maldraxxus achievement progress i've gotten the pet that can drop from it but i haven't gotten uh, like a collectible of back mushrooms 
from it. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Here we go, Gristlepeak. Break all the nearby unusual eggs to engage the rare. It just instructs you on how you how you activate the rare, and then, you know, is green, so it indicates that I've already done that and gotten credit for it for Adventure of uh, Maldraxxus achievement. Good add-on, very helpful for any sort of achievement hunting or anything like that. TomTom Tom is another really good ancient add-on that puts X and Y coordinates on your map, which you can see here. Player is at 4967, and Cursor's at, oh, well, 100 zero now, but you know, 6739, moving around. This is all I ever used it for in the past. I literally never figured out how to use waypoints. I've been using this add-on for close to 20 years. I never understood how to like set up waypoints until a week ago when I decided I was going to make this video. And here's how it works. You type slash way. Let me uh, remove my chat cover. There we go. All right. Let's say I wanted to go to the waypoint like 70, 30. Way 70, 30. Boom. And now I've set a waypoint for 7030, and that is all the way over there. That was a terrible waypoint. So I can remove it uh, by right clicking it and clicking remove waypoint. <laughs> Let's set one that's a little closer. 5365. All right. Slash way 5365. And we'll, we'll even give a little note here a little closer. And there we go. Now it's given me a little note. It's telling me exactly where to go. We've got this little arrow up here. It's even telling me how long it's going to take to get there. Isn't that nice? Wowhead has built-in functionality with TomTom that lets you directly click and export comments with coordinates in them from Wowhead as TomTom waypoints, which you can then enter in game just like I did a second ago, and it'll create waypoints for you. Some people even will like leave comments for them just like that. It has that crazy taxi style arrow, which, yeah, I guess I just outed myself as being a thousand years old by referencing a game from uh, 2000s. I hope it's from the 2000s. But yeah, this is a basic but very useful add on. I would recommend literally everyone should have this add on. I also use World Quest Tracker and World Quest List. World Quest Tracker is this. I can click on these World Quests and it's letting me track, you know, four World Quests in a row and it's giving me indications of where they are. Very basic, but you can move this around. If you go into the World Quest Tracker uh, options, you can move that around, but I don't want to do that just a second. I'm gonna close all those. And then World Quest List puts them out here on the side, shows you the rewards, lets you sort them. <laughs> alphabetically if you want to, or by time remaining, or by type of reward, or whatever. Just a great pair of add-ons that sync up really nicely with each other for any time you're going to be doing world quests, which you probably will at the start of this next expansion, and maybe you are even right now. Both of those are kind of self-explanatory, they're just great to have. All right, now we're moving into sort of a big grab bag of utility add-ons. I use Omni CC to track cooldowns on all my abilities on bars, but also like all buffs and debuffs on my target frame. Like you can see Soul Sloth ticking down here. That's Omni CC tracking that. If I hit Expel Harm, you can see Omni CC is tracking the cooldown here. Uh, Flying Serpent Kick, same thing. That's Omni CC tracking that. It just looks really nice. Better than the default Blizzard cooldown tracker, in my opinion. Add-on control panel is the most simple add-on that's ever existed. When I hit my escape button here and I pull up my, my game menu, you can see there's one little button here that says add-ons. That's add-on control panel. If you open it up, you can turn on or off different add-ons and it will turn them on or off. Uh, and then you can reload and it only applies to that character, so it won't do it account wide, but that's fine. You know, it, it allows you to disable or enable add-ons without having to re-log to the character screen, which is nice. Leatrix Plus is one of the most useful add-ons that I have. It does a ton of little things that just all add up to like a pretty significant quality of life increase. I'm gonna pull Leatrix Plus up here. I can never remember what the slash command for it is. It's slash run Leah plus and then open and close parenthesis. There we go. Alrighty. So I'm using it to enhance my tooltip, which 
shows the unit's target. See, I can see that this guy's targeting Mystic Bird Hat. He's getting his transmog on. It also colors the backdrop based on the faction, so he's Horde, so friendly color. It's coloring him by class, which is cool. You know, it's coloring these guys by faction. They're, they're my undying army. They're my buddies. Very basic stuff here. But then also, Leatrix has a bunch of automation tools that are really nice. Sell junk automatically, repair automatically, and then you can put exclusions in here. Just write in items that you don't want to be sold. It's already by default. Uh, all the gray items that you're able to trade to the pet vendor in Ouroboros to get pretty valuable pets those automatically will not be vendored and it exports a little vendor summary in the chat to let you know how much you vendored and how much it's uh you know how much it was worth in gold like i'll just demonstrate here see repaired for seven gold and then when i close gain 15 gold 54 silver of vendoring pretty minor quality of life improvement but you know not bad to have you can also automate uh, quest pickup quest hand in accepting summons that sort of thing but i kind of prefer to do that by hand narcissus is an add-on that people use mainly to get cool screenshots i also use it for uh this really nice talent tracker as well like if you open the equipment manager you have this really nice looking talent panel that goes with it and you're able to I only have one talent build as Windwalker, but you are able to set it up so that you can have talent builds that are synced up with equipment builds, which is pretty cool. And now let's see if I can ex inspect this guy before he leaves. No, come back. All right. Oh, he heard me. Excellent. Yeah, so I'm able to see this guy's talent set up here as I'm looking at him without opening the big and pretty unwieldy Blizzard version of it. Just from the inspect frame, I can see there's his talents. Cool. And that is Narcissus, in a R-C-I-S-S-U-S. -S -S. Wow, I just got slapped in the face. Annoying pop-up remover. This is another great add-on that I really like. It does exactly what its name would indicate. It removes annoying pop-ups. So if I wanted to, let's say, delete a piece of Epic gear instead of clicking and then having to type delete, I can just click yes. But I don't want to do that. Blizz move is another add-on that basically does what it says. Blizz move. You can move Blizzard panels. Pretty simple. Here's my character panel. I click it. I drag it. Oh, it's moving. If I want to reset it to its original position, hold shift, right mouse button, and it jumps right back. Moving it around, shift, right mouse button. It's, I mean, it's a basic add-on, but it's pretty nice. Blizz move. Very, very good little, little add-on. I think I only have two more here that I want to go over. Rematch is an incredible pet journal enhancement. You can toggle it on and off very easily, just with a little toggle here in the pet journal. This gives you the ability to set up teams based on different uh, pet battle NPCs out in the world, you know, world quest guys or legendary pets out in the world so once you figured out a team that works really well for you know a specific pet battle you are able to set that lock it in and then when you mouse over that npc it will automatically load it it pops out a little window that has like revive pets and battle pet bandages and so on that you can use it just automates a lot of the more annoying micromanagement that surrounds pet battles, which is something that I've always disliked. It's also pretty great. Like, let's say I wanted to find a pet that's like strong against undead, but tough against like elemental damage or something. I can I can just click here. Strong versus undead, tough versus elemental damage. And now it's pulling up uh, critter mobs for me that have like, you know, critter damage. I guess that's a bad example. Let's say tough against water damage. Here we go. Magic guys that do critter damage. Disgusting Oozling, uh, Little Leftovers, yeah, excellent, excellent add-on. And finally, Saved Instances is an add-on you can use to track all of your character's weekly lockouts, so you can see who's done what in the past week without having to log around and open up the default frame and go into raid info and, you know, mouse over here. You can just look here, 
in this frame right here. So yeah, I've done Sepulchre on this guy, killed some world bosses here, callings I have done or haven't done. It also shows a lot of extra info, like, you know, I have Paragon chests that I haven't claimed on basically all of my characters. It shows your renown, it shows your currencies, your alternate currencies, like Reservoir Anima, Soul Cinders, Cyphers, Cosmic Flux, maybe you want to move currencies back and forth between characters, you don't know who has what. Having saved instances will help you not have to relog like 50 different times to figure out who has what and how to get it to the character you want it on. Okay, I think that's all of the important add-ons that I use. I hope you find some of them helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye.